Hello, I'm Eric Archer, the Science Content Strategy Manager at Texas Instruments. Today we're going to explore the concept of natural selection, and specifically we'll look at the idea of camouflage in nature, so trying to blend into the environment to avoid predation. Um, if you'd like to work through this activity on your own, please go to our website at www.education.ti.com to download the TI Inspire CX Premium software and then download the file titled Like Moths Around a Flame from www.scienceinspired.com under the category Biology. Okay, let's get started with a famous example of camouflage in nature and also uh, an example of how man's influence um, can change sort of the conditions of, of the environment and also influence um, which species survives and which species doesn't. So in England, there's a species of insect called the peppered moth uh, that provides us with a great example of camouflage. And, and this helps us understand the process of natural selection. Uh, some of these moths are dark colored and some are light colored. So some are almost uh, black and then, um, and then the, on the other extreme example, they're, uh, they're almost white with some sort of dark um, patches. And, and I'll show you a picture of those in just a second. Uh, so anyway, uh, the color of each moth is determined by its genes for color. Uh, so a moth that is born dark will stay dark, and a moth that is born light will stay light uh, throughout its life lifespan. The peppered moth is the most active uh, during the nighttime hours, which makes it nocturnal, um, as opposed to being active during the daytime, which would be diurnal. So nocturnal um, is just means that they're active during the uh, dark hours and it spends its days resting on things like tree trunks. So, um, you know, uh, so, so in England, when this whole study was done in the 1800s, there were light colored uh, tree trunks. Um, I think they're birch trees, but, but don't quote me on that. Uh, and the moths would just kind of hang out on the, on the tree trunk during the day, um, you know, low activity. And then when the nighttime would come, then they would be more active. So uh, what was interesting is that uh, from the mid-1800s until the mid-1900s, people observed that the number of moths of each color changed over, over that span. And so what we're going to explore today is why did those changes occur? And this activity will examine data about the moths and graph that data, and then we're going to draw some conclusions uh, from that data. Uh, but one thing I want to do, just to give you an example of camouflage in nature, you can sort of reproduce this on your own at home um, or in the classroom. Uh, so what I've done here, hopefully you can see this, is I have a red piece of paper, and I've written my name uh, twice. And so I've written my name in red, and I've written my name in black. And the idea here is that I, I, the, the name size and the text is just about the same for each example. But... Uh, the point of it is, is the black sticks out way better than the red does, and the red's more camouflaged than the black. So if you were a predator and these were moths on a tree trunk, you'd probably go after the one that stands out more, okay? You're going to pick that moth off before you pick this moth off. And so that means that uh, there's an influence, uh, um, there's a selection factor, I should say, in the color of peppered moths based on the color of the tree trunk that they land upon. And so uh, the, the moths that have the more contrast, they're gonna get picked off faster than the moths that blend in, okay? All right, with that, let's uh, jump into the activity. Okay, so I've opened the file titled Like Moths Around a Flame, and you can see the title right here. Uh, in my uh, TI Inspire CX Premium software, again, you can download the software from our website and uh, the file as well, uh, as well as many, many other, other uh, science files. And what we're going to do is this, this is that image of, of the uh, peppered moth. You can see it, it, there's pretty good contrast here between the moth and the tree trunk. In some cases, the moth, I mean, almost, blend, I mean, it just blends in perfectly. You can't even see it. Uh, so, so you can Google um, peppered moth uh, and, and kind of look and see some of the images uh, for yourself. Okay. And now what we have here is a data set. And you'll notice the data, we have uh, the year. Um, this is LM count, which stands for light moth count. And DM count, obviously, is dark moth count. 
And so um, what's been done since 1860 is uh, uh, this research study is that um, out of 100 moths that are counted, they'll categorize them either as light moth or dark moth. And so back in 1860, uh, there were 90 light moths versus 10 dark moths. But as we move, whoops, as we move down the data set, um, every 10 years, you'll notice that those numbers change a bit. And we get all the way up to 1970, and those numbers are, are quite different. And and so, um, and what I'll do here is I'll just, uh, I'm going to graph this for you so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I'm going to add a, just a graphing page. And what you're seeing here, this is just a new page. So this is where we were. Um, I just added a new page called Data and Statistics. Um, and what I'm going to do is add Light Moth. And then at the bottom here, I'm going to add the, um, I'm going to shrink this up just a tad. I'm going to add the uh, year. Uh, and then I'm going to add another Y variable called the, the DM count. And so you can see the sort of the contrast in the data between dark moth counts and light moth counts. So the, the question is, is why the change? I mean, this is a pretty significant change in, in about 100 years. You know, what happened? Why was one selected for over the other when light moths were sort of the, uh, uh, the preferred the, uh, camouflage over dark moths? And then for some reason, the dark moths um, took over and the light moths started to decrease. By the way, these are both uh, members of the same species of peppered moth. These aren't different species. They're the same. There's just variation. Uh, just like people don't look the same, but we're from the same species. Same thing going on here with the uh, peppered moth. Okay, uh, but let's jump over to the next page and start answering some of these questions. So which of the following are independent variables in this activity? Uh, Says more than one response may be correct. So let's remember what an independent variable is. An independent variable is a variable that isn't influenced by any other variable. Um, so in most cases, whenever we're dealing with time, um, in this case years, but it could be minutes, seconds, hours, whatever, uh, time is, is almost always an independent variable. And in science, we put the independent variable typically on the x-axis okay and so that's why you see in this graph we have it down here at the x-axis uh, what's not independent is the uh, number of dark colored and light colored moths now why is that why are they not independent instead they're known as dependent variables which is the next question what which are the following are the dependent variables the reason these are dependent is because clearly there's some kind of change now, there's no influence in the number of years. I mean, these, this time just takes away regardless of whatever happens to these moths. And time's not going to change, therefore it's independent. Uh, however, there seems to be some kind of effect over time on these moths. So something's happening over time to change the selection factor, uh, the selection factor uh, for these, these moths. Well, let's go ahead and answer these questions. So which of the following are independent variables? There's actually only one in this one. It's the year. Okay, remember, uh, time isn't influenced by any other variable uh, in, in this study. And then page 1.5, which of the following are dependent? They're dependent upon something else that's happening. Uh, it would be both of these, the number of dark colored moths and light colored moths. You can see uh, there's a difference between them. All right, so I, I changed things up a little bit, but uh, this is just a you know another graph. We've we've already looked at this, but I'll go ahead and um, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and regraph this. Um, oops, let me just hey, you know, let me get a year here. Get a year, and then we're going to add a y variable. We'll put the light moth count right here again. Uh, it's funny if you flip either of these graphs onto the other. Uh, they're almost identical. So if I were to take this orange square graph, which is the light colored moth, and flip it, the peak would be up here. You see the rise would be, the decrease would here be, would be the same as the rise. So uh, that's very interesting. And I think we'll talk about that here in a, in a few minutes um, as to what's going on. One thing I, I do need to share with you at this point is 
what was going on in the 1800s, like especially in England. In the 1800s, there was a, there was a big thing that was happening. Um, it was happening in other parts of the world too, but but England, uh, there was a lot happening. And that is the Industrial Revolution. So we were making things. We were making machines. And those machines required the use of fuel uh, to run. Um, so in factories, we had machines to help make other machines, and they were using a lot of coal. Uh, coal's a sort of a, you know, it's a, it's a, um, it's a carbon that, that can be used to burn, to heat up water, to create steam, and steam is high pressure, so it's able to move parts um, in an engine uh, to, to, you know, to, to get your machinery going in your factory. Well, the byproduct of burning coal is soot, uh, and soot pumps out of those those tall smokestacks and kind of settles on the environment around them. So think about that. Soot is dark. It's uh, it's very dark. And so if soot is coating the plants, the trees, the tree trunks, the landscape, and all of a sudden. The Industrial Revolution's kicking up about during this time right here, this, this front part of uh, the graph. The light colored moths are now landing against darker colored tree trunks and the dark colored moths are landing against dark colored tree trunks. So you can kind of see what's happening here. So in the example I showed you with the red paper, my name was written in red and it was written in black. Now think about, um, you know, a, a different colored paper where uh, you know, the black blends in better than the red. And so the red stands out more. So same thing with these moths is that the uh, dark colored moths were, were better camouflaged in this new environment. Now the moths themselves, I mean, didn't really change. The moths weren't doing anything different. They were just doing what moths do uh, and, and, you know, staying inactive during the day, landing on the nearest structure they could find. In most cases, those are tree trunks. What did change is man's influence on the environment because we were pumping out that soot um, to, to make the machines to, and by the way, the industrial revolution led to a lot of incredible breakthroughs and technologies. And, and, uh, and in some cases you can make an argument that, you know, we're all better off because of it. Uh, the, the unfortunate consequence of that is that, you know, there's some, some pretty significant pollution Back then, we didn't really understand the problems of pollution. Now we do. And so we've made a lot of steps to correct it. And guess when those steps started happening? Yep. Yep. And between the 1950s and 1960s, a lot of environmental, environmentally minded folks started saying, hey, you know what? Maybe we should stop pumping out soot into the uh, atmosphere. It's not so good. Um, and as a result, uh, you can notice that there's there's more of a balance that's happening in, in that uh peppered moth population. So pretty cool um, uh, story and uh, just an interesting example of man's influence over the environment and man's influence over selection factors within the environment. So we're learning about this process called natural selection. In this case, um, wasn't so natural, but it, but it worked the same way. So, all right, so page 1.7, examine the data in the graph. Describe the trend you see in the numbers of light-colored moth, moths as the decades passed. Also describe the trend you see in the numbers of dark-colored moths. So uh, take a stab at um, describing these sorts of uh, things on your own. You know, uh, hopefully my description was, was helpful. And then please open up the, uh, the student document and within the student document, you'll notice a series of questions um, that are meant to help you think about what's happening with, uh, with the process of, of uh, moth select, peppered moth selection uh, because of the Industrial Revolution, the, sort of the negative impact it had on, on you know, the, uh, the light-colored moths, our sort of correction that happened here. And, and what's happening as a result of, of being more environmentally conscious as we uh, continue to improve technology and continue to improve, you know, um, humans' uh, lifestyles. Uh, so, so now that we're all aware, we're trying to find a balance between not hurting the environment and also continuing to improve, you know, our condition. So pretty cool stuff. 
Okay, so with that, uh, that's the end of this particular activity. I would certainly recommend you check out our website again at, at uh, www.scienceinspired.com and uh, look for other activities. There's, uh, I think there's another activity on there that, that talks about natural selection where you're, you're looking at some uh, uh, rabbit populations of, with uh, varying degrees of um, mutations, um, fur color, in, in different environments. So um, it, it's another example of, uh, you know, sort of a simulation to help you understand the process of natural selection. All right. Uh, so please check out our website and uh, look for another video soon from me and other science folks at TI. Uh, have a good day. Thank you.